Bijapur, North Karnatak, the city of gold goombas, the work of genius, and in its shadow, victims of ignorance. <laughs> People here, as in other parts of the country, are resigned to superstitious helplessness. At least 300 million people in the country are at this very moment uncertain about their income today. They know that they cannot control life because they cannot control the world around them, the world which the rich and the literate have organized for themselves. We went to Kedari's village where he lives in a squatter's homestead with his parents. In three generations, nobody has owned land in the family. Kedari works as an agricultural laborer for about 15 rupees a day, but he doesn't find work for more than six months in the year. Kedari is 22 years old and totally illiterate. Didn't you ever go to school, Kedari? Work. Parents said no school. Didn't somebody tell you about night school? Nobody cared for me. As a child, I had to fill my stomach. Kedari, was life difficult because you could not read and write? Did people make you feel embarrassed? From Kedari to Sukro, who lives in a small village in far away Ranchi district of Bihar. I cut grass in the jungle and then sell it. That's how I feed my children. Husband is mad and drinks too. I should get four rupees for the grass, but I can't count the change quickly and the buyer cheats me. It's the same at the Russian shop. Halfway home, I think, did the shopkeeper return the change? Then I go back to him. Come tomorrow, he says. I have no time for all this just now. If I have one rupee, I travel back to the village by bus. But if an educated person stands near my seat, the conductor shouts at me, get up, get up. And then I stand up and hang on to the railing. Educated persons are rather arrogant. Sukro and Kedari and countless others are talking of their anguish as illiterate persons who are losing even their unstable foothold on everyday life because they lack the power to decipher this world. For 40 years, we in India have made policies for literacy and implemented projects, but illiteracy and want have grown stubbornly. The gulf has widened between the opportunities available to highly educated Indians and to illiterate Indians. For the unlettered, life stands still. But here and there, a small light is suddenly visible because a spark has been ignited. A spark which is a pledge to ensure that every child and adult in a district becomes literate in one short active span of five months. In 30 of the country's over 450 districts, Bijapur is one of the 30 districts. In Bijapur at the moment, 72 out of 100 persons are illiterate. But even as you watch this program, thousands of improvised classes are in progress in villages and small towns in the district. And the teachers are literate persons of Bijapur, young men and women, middle-aged housewives, retired teachers, and government officials who are teaching without payment. 
Everybody in the district has been associated with creating awareness about literacy as recipient or activist. Women's groups have sprung up to create a demand for literacy. How has this demand been created? Women activists are at stage center enacting a street play. <laughs> Here, a big landlord orders his servant around to get cigarettes and pan, and then settles down to a relaxed afternoon. Soon, an impoverished landless laborer comes to ask him for loan to buy food for the family. Go away, you parasite, you won't get anything. The poor peasant parts with his last five rupees to bribe the servant. The loan is arranged. Sign in this paper. Oh no, I can't sign my name, can't use a pen. I will put my thumb impression on anything you write. And soon, the peasant cries with grief when he learns that the amount he has signed for with his thumb is 20 times more than what he borrowed. And a village council is held and the elders decide to invite the literacy campaigners to start a class. The audience watches attentively. It's a leaf out of their own daily lives. And then a rousing song on literacy rises from the dust. <laughs> Women from small towns and villages have so far led cloistered lives. But now in the literacy program, they have found a means to make useful contact with the world outside their home. Mostly to go to class as learners, but also to teach. The campaign in Bijapur started in April 1990. Word spread fast, even to remote villages, and within two or three months, almost every villager had heard of the literacy class in their village. The first class was held on August 15, 1990, and the last class will be held on January 26, 1991. And during these five months, more than half a million persons will enter the world of the literate. 350,000 of them will be girls and women. Most of the persons are 9 to 35 years old, but older and younger persons are attending classes. Local elected panchayats in Bijapur have extended full you support to the program. Kalasar. This is a noble and pure mission. The panchayat members find the volunteers and help to make a list of the illiterate in each ward in every village. But won't political personalities distort the literacy campaign to serve their own purpose? The vice chairperson of the district council. No political party wants the people to remain illiterate. This program can succeed only if local persons and agencies wanted to succeed. Voluntary agencies have a crucial role in stimulating people's desire to become literate. These women of Bijapur's Mahila Samakya organization have fought villagers' prejudice. Men are often drunk when we reach the village. Somehow I talk and cajole the younger men. Or we contact an old woman, and once she understands that it is not shameful for women to learn at any age, she calls other villagers, and we stage a play to begin with. Then a discussion, and then classes. Sometimes women start crying after they see a street play. This is the story of my life, they say. What can I do to get out of this awful life? Then we suggest that they should form a Mahila Sangha. I tell them that I was totally illiterate and now I have reached a standard of seventh class in a year. I work for women's groups to give women justice and power through literacy. 
I take the women to the Mandal office at the block headquarters. Those officers say to me, only you should come to visit us. These women should not come. I insist that these women will come and discuss and fill in their employment or pension applications themselves. That's a part of their learning. Village women's groups join other villagers to organize foot marches and processions to provide publicity to the literacy campaign. Then local volunteers conduct door-to-door -door surveys to inquire about the number of illiterates and to get to know them. And the majority of illiterates is women. This data is taken to the control room which functions 24 hours a day and is located in the premises of the collector's office in Bijapur. The posters on the wall in the control room convey the spirit of the campaign. But isn't a control room associated with a military campaign during war? So we have to work on the war footing, so we have to make a control room. Yes, we have a control room because we are working on a war footing. It's not for the war, but this war is against illiteracy. If it is war, what are they going to attack and to achieve? The norms are absolutely clear. Every learner must be able to read 30 words per minute with comprehension. Every learner must be able to write eight words per minute to know why everyone must have work, why everybody has a right to food, how the country became free, why everyone has one vote. The teachers hold the classes in a small room in somebody's house or in the godown of a shop or the premises of a place of worship and give to this program about two hours a day consistently for six months. They don't get paid at all. Why do they give their time and free? I just wanted to teach. There's no other big reason for me to be involved in this program. I'm studying in class 12 and can spare the time for teaching these people at night. I don't want my people to remain illiterate. Many women are volunteer teachers. Why? Tribals like the Lombardis don't get a real chance to become literate. I'm a Lombardi myself and became educated by chance, but I've always felt helpless about my people. Now I have a chance and I'm going to use it to teach them. The class starts at 8 o'clock at night, but learners come at 7 o'clock already. I don't want any payment for teaching. The volunteers are trained for about five days at the district headquarters. The trainers are experienced activists of voluntary organizations. The volunteers discuss what role they will play in the campaign and learn about ways to teach adults. The teachers discuss life's main questions about food, minimum wages, the world around us, why prices are high, and what do learners think after two months of lessons and literacy? I think it is a solution. I think I'll be able to fill my stomach. Kedari, don't you get tired here in the class after working in the fields all day? No, I work 15 hours a day, but I come here for two hours willingly. I have to become literate. Other children used to go to school. I wanted to go also, but I didn't have the school fee. And my parents asked me to go to the fields with the animals. I think here I'll be able to learn everything forever. In another village, a women's class is in progress. And what do women think after two months of education? I had to take my letters to somebody else who could read them. Why should anyone else read my letters? Now, I want to read properly, but I'm very slow. 
Once I got into a bus without knowing where I was going, I was too ashamed to ask. No, I don't feel embarrassed to come to class now. I had household work to do, so my parents did not send me to school. My brother went to school because he was free. I used to think, I have a good brain. Why don't my parents let me put education into it? Anyway, now after finishing all the work at home, I come here in the evening for this education. Are you more clever than boys? No, I don't want to learn to read. It only creates problems. Most women said that their families tell them to cook the food and to go to class. Then nobody minds their coming here. For the first time, life is stirring and early signs of awareness are visible amongst women and girls. We work as coolie labor. If they give us 10 rupees when 20 is due to us, we can't argue. If I learn, my husband will be happy. He's also illiterate. But men will learn faster because they have no household work. I feel shy because in childhood I didn't learn and this is not an age to study. How shall I write in a book? A slate is okay for me. We know how to cook roti, load it on the head and carry it to the field. That's all we know. But if we were a little educated, dowry payments could go down, we think. Why do we have to learn? We won't get any money for learning. What we need is light and drinking water in the villages. We work the whole day and we are very sleepy when we come to class. We keep trying, but we fall asleep. <laughs> But we must learn because only then will our children become literate and that is important. The state government machinery is involved in this program but not for the first time. Why were earlier attempts at adult education not successful? The collector of Bijapur. Because the adult education program now has been uh, very limited in, uh, in uh, reach. So in this program, he had uh, widened his reach completely. I mean, we have covered every person. But such a program requires a great deal of flexibility, and governments are not known for flexibility. How have you reconciled the two, or haven't you reconciled them? On the, say, on the implementation side, one way we have uh, got around this inflexibility is creating a society to implement the program, so that we are not bound by government rules and financial procedures and uh, other uh, regulations. The other way is that we have involved uh, voluntary agencies in a very large way. And uh, all, since it's an entirely volunteer-based program, we have, uh, by force, we have to respond to them uh, in a non-governmental fashion. Government, uh, non-governmental official, uh, voluntary agencies, all are involved. So, this is a movement. Just like normally, before independence, it's a movement. Government and non-government agencies are working together. It's the same feeling as people must have had at the time of the independence movement. Women have taken this up as a challenge because now they can come out of their homes. They want to succeed, both as learners and as teachers. In the literacy campaign, what we uh, want to achieve is not just literacy, because literacy per se have no meaning in the life of the people or any in individual. We talk of illiteracy, we are talking about poverty and inequality and exploitation. So this angle, has to be emphasized everywhere. We have a street place on corruption, street place on untouchability, street play how a woman is exploited and about the Devadasi. And these are the dimensions which the literacy generally, average governmental literacy program, miss in their implementation. But we are consciously doing this so that literacy should not be an isolated event. It should be integrated to the people's activities and people's life. It will have the direct relation to their day-to-day -day life. This campaign, our uh, expenditure is, comes around 60 rupees per adult. I can say this is the most uh, cost-effective campaign at ever launched so far. So I'm speaking of government contribution. If you take the total cost, uh, because in the form of uh, mobilization and 
participation of uh, 50 to 60,000 volunteers. Costs are stupendous, but here is that uh, that is mostly a voluntary contribution. After the literacy campaign is over, aspirations, expectations will rise. Uh, what do you anticipate will happen to society? In the process, uh, large number of people, they start demanding things and they, they start asking the questions. I think to begin with, they may ask some wrong questions, but I think ultimately they are they will ask the right kind of questions about their rights and about their legitimate uh, needs and their, why the state is not providing them this and that, both social needs and economic needs. And So I think this is going to have a tremendous impact, but uh, well, the time will tell how far, uh, how best the state missionary can raise to the people's uh, demands. We are talking uh, also about uh, social churning and turmoil that this program is going to result in. Don't you foresee a law and order problem? Higher literacy does not automatically mean uh, more law and order problems. We can have the example of Kerala and uh, in our own state, Dakshin Kannada. Let me make a distinction. In Kerala, literacy uh, took place as a steady linear trend of growth. In Bijapur, there's going to be literacy with a quantum leap in society. Will there be churning in society of an order that creates law and order problems? Literacy is a means to know things. Literacy is a means to become aware gradually. This program of literacy has its beginnings in the southern state of Kerala, where consciousness and awareness of the injustice of illiteracy had been growing in Ernakulam district of Kerala for some years. In January 89, a voluntary agency, KSSP, Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad, and the state and central governments joined hands to achieve 100% literacy. Classes started in June 89. Nobody waited for fancy teaching aids, a bit of sand, and the will to teach and learn, that was enough to leave an imprint not only on Kerala, but indeed on the rest of the country. Students took pledges to teach. <laughs> Village panchayat leaders honored the volunteer teachers at public functions, and Arnakulam reached the 100% literacy mark in February 1990. Nine months and a world of difference for those who had entered a different world. KSSP activists and the central government have now initiated Bharatiya Gyan Vigyan Jatha in almost all states of the country as a first step to creating a demand for literacy. What is the central belief of the Arnakulam activists? If people have to learn, people have to enjoy it. And there is nothing enjoyable which does not evoke curiosity, which does not evoke wonder. What standard do you think the learners achieve in 200 hours spread over 12 months? Uh, it is uh, around about a third and fourth standard. That, that means primary school level standard. Why did the volunteers, who are almost all matriculates, offer so much of their time free for teaching? Most of them were unemployed. So they thought that uh, they are not useful to the society in that way, what they have learned. Then they have now become the instructor sort of teachers. And the teacher has got a, their own respectability, even though the students are much older. There is a comment that this kind of 100% literacy could have happened in Kerala, where the general literacy level is quite high, but that it cannot happen in educationally backward states. There is no reason to believe so. Something happens in Kerala, it's OK. But you know, other parts of India, it will not happen. No. There is no reason, you know, to believe otherwise. I don't believe so. Because here in the, the, the backward area, we have never gone before. People have been telling me that these things can happen in Kerala, but in not backward districts like uh, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar and other places. Having gone there and having seen the enthusiasm of the people, the, their will, uh, will to learn, now when they saw that things can change, then the crust is removed. So it was the belief that things can change. Do you think that the poorest person can learn? For the primary learning, anybody, the poorest person can learn that we have demonstrated. What do you finally give in your program? Do you give literacy or do you give power? One cannot give power. Power has to be taken. But literacy is a tool which will enable them to take power in their hands. Would you say that you are going beyond literacy? Oh, it is presumptuous to say that we are going beyond literacy. But the fact is that nobody can stop them from going beyond literacy. Bijapur has seen literacy as a means 
to fight exploitation, to fight ignorance, to fight helplessness. Beyond literacy lies knowledge, and knowledge is power, and power must be shared. Bijapur has taken this decision in favor of its powerless. Why are other districts waiting? Don't they know the anguish of the illiterate? Or don't they care?